Welcome back. Oh, welcome. It has been a month At since least we last recorded. Multiple months. I've forgotten how to do this. Yeah. I'll be honest. Am I am I speaking in the mic correct? Can you all hear me? <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. I'll probably just <laughs> mute him anyway. Oh, thanks. But my goodness, <laughs> episode five. I had so much fun editing I, this. I, oh God, I died. I think I died multiple times you while You definitely did die this. several times. The fucking... Can I just talk about it immediately out the gate? Is that a good idea? I, I kind of want to. I feel like it's, it the fr- it's the freshest thing on the brain. Let's go. Here's the thing. I recently watched... Yes, it, wait, no. Today. Saturday. Yeah. Yesterday came out the final tea party for episode five. I I don't think I have ever... I don't think there is any recording of me anywhere crying like into a microphone or on video or anything like that until um, until, until then. that happened <laughs> i was so overcome with every emotion like you can go back and rewatch like every 10 minutes i'm feeling a different emotion it's like calm it's like i've got myself together and it's apprehension for what i know it's gonna happen and then it's like a little bit of concern and then it's just completely broken but then by the end, I'm the hype man again. Like I go through the entire like sequence of of grief from like <laughs> disbelief to acceptance in yeah. that one hour. It's great. It was a um, lot of fun to edit. Yeah. And to be in the room for the first time. <laughs> yeah. It hurt a lot. Cuz I mean, pretty much to you, that was like <laughs> that was you f- that was your first time rereading that since finishing. Yeah. So that was you so finally was understanding oh, yeah. what was we, happening. We're going full spoilers on this. Yeah. I had my fucking end of EP8 feelings during that scene. I was like, oh yeah, that's when, that's when uh, Beatrice gives up on Battler. That's when Sayo realizes that she doesn't like have a place in the real world. That's when she falls off a certain boat. And the thing is to me, right? <laughs> And let's 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 get into the bragging for this episode. Oh fuck you! I I knew exactly what was happening. I didn't. I I had a theory as to what was happening, and I yeah. didn't think it was going to end up being correct. Yeah. But I was fucking dead on. Yeah, you were no, you were one hundred percent correct, my dude. I I give you full props for like figuring everything out. I know there were some people in the comments like, did you even, did you just predict like the gold color of truth? Not not to mock you too hard because we shouldn't mock the audience, but yes, we should. Yes, <laughs> this is true. Uh, Felix is a golden god and he deserves all the props for it, it was kind of funny everything. like episodes one to four I was editing and being like god I'm so stupid how did I ever ignore this yeah. this this yeah. this and this and then yeah. I get to episode five and I'm like how the, the hell yeah. did I come up with that how, how did you figure that out <laughs> yeah 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 it's definitely a lot of fun to see all the things that you got right like um and it's it was really interesting for me going through and seeing like me then thinking about how I should feel if I was correct, as yeah. opposed to me now feeling how I feel. How how did you feel during all that? Like, what's what's changed since then, my dude, since episode five? I think I have a lot more appreciation for what it's actually showing. Like, yeah. especially with all of the, uh, the scenes about, you know, Beatrice turning into a, a you know, still doll and uh, all of the ocean metaphors. Yeah, like... Battler, you know, he, he stops thinking. He, he well, it, yeah, because we talk about like death and what death means in the world. It means that he stops thinking. So he doesn't figure out his promise, which is the title of the song that plays over that scene. He doesn't figure out his promise. He doesn't figure out Beatrice until after she, quote, crumbles into dust uh, or sand, perhaps. Uh, like, just thinking about how Beatrice feels in that moment destroys me inside. Yeah. It Um. was, like, the first time reading it through, I was like, oh, so this is what's happening, and yeah, you know, she's she's crumbled, she's crumbled to dust, she's turned to oblivion at the bottom of the ocean. Yep. You know, the shackle on her legs pulled her down or whatever, and I was like, wow, you know, that's that's really well written. I really love I really love the metaphor that's going on here. And And then I saw it, and I was like, (laughs) oh my god, why did I have to be right? I know, I know. It's one of those things, and that's something that we we continuously praise him and echo for, that like you like it's designs that you figure out what's happening. And then you regret being right, right? Yeah. It's not like, oh, I called this from a mile away. It's like, I called this from a mile away, but oh, I wish I hadn't. I wish I hadn't. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, to its credit. So good. (laughs) So good. Certainly. 
And oh man. I think the the other fantastic thing about this episode was this was the episode that finally gave us the thing that hooked me on Umineko. What was this? What was this? What? 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 It was that Dlanor Anox. Oh! Best girl. Uh, back before we started, Ben was like, oh man, I'm reading this book and it's really great and there's all of these detective theorists that are brought up in it and it's like really interesting seeing how the story, you know, pulls pulls apart the convention of its own genre and that was like, that was what sold me on the story. Yeah, yep, yep. Because I'm a fucking nerd. Yep, um, absolutely. And it was so good yeah, after I, after four episodes, four and a half got episodes, it. finally um, got Glanor. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I I picked this to him while I was reading EP five. That's when I was like, I gotta tell someone about this. This is insane. Because sure, it really does take it up to the next level with the fucking like personification of of rules and all that nonsense. Yeah, which is really fun. So I I knew about Nox and Van Dyne before they were both mentioned in the story, and I was yeah, yeah. so happy to finally yeah. get them. And you got to voice her too. Absolutely. Uh, how do you feel about your voice now that you've come full circle? How do you, I want you to tell me how you feel before I tell you how I feel. I hate it. It's not that terrible. I mean, you put the voice effect on, it sounds all right. It sounds all right. But I think the fact that it needed a voice effect speaks for how weak it yeah. is. Um, it, I definitely think it's your weakest voice. Uh, something that we didn't do for EP4 was actually say who our favorite voices were for the episode. Uh, for the record, I didn't... Who did you even have as a new voice in episode four? Did you have anyone? Did I... You voiced Angie, uh, you mean, voiced Angie, of. but she was like in episode three. I had plenty of new voices, but we all know that Kawabata was the best voice. The best voice. Uh, objectively. No But question. in this episode, I actually want to point out uh, the Medford 19 years ago as being some excellent voice work on your part. Oh my God, yes. Because that was menacing as hell. While also not being like full serial killer. Like I would believe that Battler would make that voice as like a joke, um, which was excellent. Um, yeah, I think just uh, we we probably mentioned it in the comments, and I did I think bring it up the first time I debuted the voice. Yeah, and uh, it will show up again later though. Twisted. Yep. Um, <laughs> what was that? Was that was the voice that I gave a particular character for a Dungeons and Dragons campaign? Yep. Who was <laughs> essentially he was he was the pinnacle of like lawful good. He was yep. he was the lawman that believed in redemption. Yep. But he had a uh, a penchant for interrogation. Yep. And basically all I did was switched on interrogation voice yeah, yeah. for those scenes. Yep. There's a little bit of a mind torture to solve it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, that, was, that was really fun to voice. Yeah. I, I really enjoy doing that. I think one of the things that actually in editing I did enjoy about my voices for Isona Jungfrau yeah. was despite how like bland and similar they were, at least to my ear, mm. I could still hear the subtle differences that I yeah. put in with each different character. Yeah. Um, so I, I I don't feel terrible about it, but I think definitely of all of my voices, Lanar is by far the weakest. I, I would agree. I would agree. But um, holy shit, I'm sorry, Ben. Beatrice is absolutely destroyed by how good your Erica is. <laughs> Really? Yes. Is that how far are we going with this? Oh my god. I like when uh, I when I hear you doing any other character, it's Ben playing this character. When I hear you do Erica, it's Erica. I am very curious to see how that holds up, especially because my voice is uh, spoilers, it's going to change. Uh Erica gets a, a different kind of streak. It's not a cool streak, it's it's similar a similar word, but it's not gonna go well in the next episode, and I know that my voice is going to change. And I'm very curious to see in editing how well my voice holds up. It'll be interesting. Um but yeah, no, I, I was very happy with my Erica voice. I have been kind of working on that in the shadows ever since episode one. I was like, well, one of us has to play Delanor and the other one has to play Erica, and I feel like if Felix plays Erica, he's not gonna he's not gonna like like fully yeah. get her Blana at first can, glance. can get away um, with being bad. Yes, like she she has no, she's a murder doll. That's her mm. thing. Yeah, uh, we can get away with that. But Erica, like I felt like I had a bit of an ego moment where I was like, I don't. Nobody else can voice Erica but me. Nobody can do it correctly. Like <laughs> I've been slowly just like working on that voice. Also, I wanted Erica to be opposite uh, Andre. Yeah, as well. I should really make just a, a map of all the voices and like. Because the way that I did it was I had, like, these are all the different pairs in the game, and we should be on the opposite side of each pair. Um, but, yeah, I really enjoyed getting to voice Erica. It, of course, led to some rather comedic moments, like when I was fucking broken, and then the very next character speak was <laughs> Erica. <laughs> that pretty much killed me. But apart from that, she's fun. 
It's fun to be the bad guy. Um, it really you is. Know, speaking of tabletop games, I almost always play the bad guy or the secret bad guy or the like roguish type, you know, who's out for themselves. So playing a bad character is something that I'm quite familiar with. Um, and it's really fun. He's he's too good at it. If I suddenly <laughs> disappear, you. you know what's happened. I am a murderer, fact. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean... Do you have any... I don't know if there's anything to really say about Erica as a character. We've kind of all said it in the playthrough. Mm. Um, we've really unpacked her really well, I think. I think definitely before we forget to mention it, yes. we, for episode five, uh, were you on the five one or was it just me? I think you're on six for the podcast. Uh, yes, I was episode six. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. I was part of the cast for the Rakenjima.org uh, Tea Party podcast for episode five. Yep. Which is going to be in the- Five through eight. He was on five through eight. I yeah. was only on six because fuck me. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be, that'll be linked in the playlist at the appropriate time. Um, but if you want to hear more thoughts on Erica, definitely go listen to that. Yeah, we, we had a good chat. A good, good chewing of it. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I think definitely re- like, you know, not to drag on Erica's character, because as we said, we've spoken about it a lot. Yep, but she's amazing. She Love she is a fantastic example of how Ryukishi writes commentary without it feeling like commentary. Yeah. Um, I think definitely the first time through, I definitely read Erica as commentary a lot. But the second time through, when I wasn't so worried about trying to figure things out. Yeah. I think it made a lot more sense to see her as a character and yep. seeing, you know, why she is the way she is. Yep, yep, There's yep. some discussions that happen later in the story I won't get into. Mm. But she very much is a character that serves as commentary. Yep. And I think I missed that a lot the first time through. But I really appreciated that on a reread. Yeah, like she... She wants things. She has desires. She acts of her own accord. Uh, shout to EP6. But like, like her entire purpose is to serve her master. And I think it's especially apparent when she, when her, her, her theory starts crumbling down and Burn is like, you should get the fuck out of there. What are you, what are you doing? Uh, of course, the fact that Burn also helped with the theory, like alongside Erica, she just says, nope, it was Erica. Like it was Erica's theory. Yeah. You got a shitty theory, to, you know, to like save her own hide. But Erica's whole concern is just like her own pride. Um, and part of that, to get a little bit of meta stuff, there are profiles for the characters. Um, and Erica's birthday is the day of the uh, incident. And also you may know she is given blue hair like Burn Castle. It's very much indicated that the character of Erica has like nothing to do with the real Erica who like fell off the boat pretty yeah. much. It's just like stories that people made up, um, which I'm sure we we talk about later. But Definitely. like she is very much her own thing um, and we love her for it. We love her maniacal laugh and her dainty dress that is Jessica's, but she's also like really small. And I imagine she's also trying to like make up for that a little bit, you know, a little smallness. She's like, maybe I could be, maybe I'll be bigger. My brain's big. Yeah. I think one of the other things in episode, uh, episode five that really, really stuck out to me in editing was, I mean, it was very obvious at the start and I was definitely cognizant of it as we were playing through, but I don't think I brought it up much. Yeah. Was how obvious it was that Ryukishi had written episode five in response to like all of the theories yes. that were online. Yes. Like I know people were saying to me when we were releasing episode four that a lot of the theories I was coming up with were things that people had suggested at the time the story came out. Mm-hmm. And then episode five happened and Shannon and Cannon appear in the same room and yep. it's like, well, <laughs> rip your theory. Yeah. Um, but I definitely noticed a lot more in editing how many things Ryukishi tries to like fight you on. There are so many instances mm-hmm. of like, well, you know, this character could have been the culprit and that character's just completely uninvolved, couldn't have possibly done it. Yep. That entire breakdown at the end of episode five that Erica runs through, mm. as well as locking in Natsui as Erica's culprit, yeah. it throws out of the way so many theories that I know existed for episodes one to four. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> Rosatris. No, don't talk about that. <laughs> but... Uh, but there, there are a lot of things, basically, in theories from episodes one to four that Rikishi just really challenges in this episode. And yep. I think it's really interesting to see how he tackles them all without both giving away the answer and without, and without m- making the answer, like, impossible. I would even say just without derailing the story as well. Like, the way that... Just the fact that Rikishi's able to, like... Like, if you do not have a theory where Shannon and Ken are the same person, you will not notice the fact that they are suddenly in the same room. Yeah. Like, when I was reading this, like, I had a, a spark of inspiration episode for, like, what if they're the same person? But I wasn't really thinking about it during the episode. So then when people were like, but that's the one where they're in the same room. And I'm like, 
Is it? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let me go back and check that. I don't actually remember that at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like if you're, if you don't have like all these solid theories built up, you're not going to be seeing the, the counters that Rikuji is putting in place, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Cause there's, there's definitely certain scope where it would be like, uh, to, you know, cut to purgatory and, uh, and Garp's like, well now they haven't appeared in the same room before. Yeah, exactly. He can be really overt about it, but, <laughs> but he's no. not. Um, the things that he's overt about usually are, uh, you know, truthful or like obvious red herrings that are supposed to turn you away mm. all the time. Uh, except when he just gives you the answer, but that's beside the point. I think one of the other things for me in editing this episode was there are a lot of things that don't really factor into a solution or an answer yeah. that just kind of intrigue me. Like, particular, I'll throw it up on screen, but there was a line that was like, uh, you know, they went to the underside of the game board into oblivion. Yes. And I was like, D- did they drown? Yeah, you is that what a, this is saying? You had a nice long rant about this, uh, one of the many discords that we frequent. Because, uh, yeah, like... In my mind, I assumed that the underside of the game board meant uh, the war base, which we know exists because this is the spoiler section. Get out of yeah. here, nerds who are being spoiled. Uh, the war base, in particular, there is a submarine bay yeah. with water in it. I'm just saying that I, that's where I would put them. Like if I were a murderer who didn't who didn't care about the art of the of the kill, as it were. Like that's something that's definitely like a big part of the episode. Theme like, there of is five, no yeah. love of five. It's just about killing people in revenge. What better way to serve people that you despise them by dumping them into the mass grave of World War II people that were murdered uh, however many years ago that was, yeah. which I reckon is like in the submarine base. Um, just dump them in the water uh, with the, the submarine that carried the gold, you know? That's that's my thoughts, at least. I, I think that it, they're definitely somewhere like disrespectful for sure. And it definitely does kind of like foreshadow also the death of Beatrice. Like, yeah. it's like, oh, this is where people go when they die. Yeah. And there's a lot of mentions of oblivion and darkness, which also comes around when Beatrice passes away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and other characters too. In fact, now that I think about it, <laughs> that's where Erica was banished to. Yep. And I did see the theory that Erica, like, well, you know, obviously she drowned, it, she drowned right? Yep. Um, there was also the suggestion that someone made, uh, I think in response to one of Newt's videos, shout out to Newt, shout out to Newt, uh, which was that, uh, Erica had actually committed suicide and that's why her family, uh, I think it's mentioned that her family like didn't know what happened to her or something. I mean, in one I th- of the tips, I think that like part of the point is that no one knows. Right. And that's why in the cat box of Erica's death, yeah. we are allowed to insert her into this other cat box. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, well, yeah, no, that, that's definitely the point. But I'm saying, like, these theories are out there and those sure. parallels certainly are interesting. Sure, sure. It does, you know, the fact that they're written very much the same does imply that there yeah. is some actual part of the story that is the same as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm definitely of the opinion that IRL, Erica falls off the boat, whether it's suicide or not, I don't think it matters. I think she just fell off, died. Uh, and had nothing to do with the events of the island. Um, what, you're telling me you don't think through several miracles Erica drifted to the island? Well, that's the thing. It's possible, but that's, you know, that's a cat box. You know, anything's possible. Ugh. Except for witches. That's impossible. That is definitely Magic, impossible. Magic, just get it out of here. <laughs> and I suppose the other thing that was... Uh, oh, there we go. I who just executed to, them. you killing? I'm killing all of them. Can you kill Kraus again? No, Kraus is grey. Nope, there oh, he is. Yeah, there I, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's confirmed later that he was killed shortly after the phone call. Which which was interesting. I Which it says right there on the screen. <laughs> uh <laughs> like it's I think it might be the only death except yeah. for Canon in episode four that yes. we haven't seen. Like you don't see the body? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I mean, of course, we can and we, <laughs> we do see we, the body. Yeah, we know <laughs> what's going on with them. Uh, but yeah, no, you're right. Kraus is like, as I said, like the the killer in, in this episode, like if we watch the murders progress, like we're not going to see these artfully constructed closed rooms. There is fact, no actually, art yeah, behind having, this. Having said that now, we don't see any of the corpses no, in this episode. No, there is no like, hey, battler, why don't you try and figure out my fun mystery game? It's just they're dead. They're dead move on like it's there is no art behind it there is no passion behind it there is no like communication attempt it's just kill 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 yeah there are a lot of theories i've seen around as to what the this episode is without love thing means but i think 
Uh, mm. A lot of it comes down to the culprit's goal in this yep. episode is more to get vengeance on Natsui than anything else. Uh, yeah, yeah. Natsui's definitely the, the focus, though I, I also argue that it's like... Uh, just as an example, like Battler is an accomplice in this episode. I feel like that's that's a pretty obvious thing here. Um, and I think that if perhaps like Battler doesn't know that people are being killed later on, Battler figures out that all the people who he was like, oh no, they were totally killed, have been killed. He's gonna feel like crap. I think that that's definitely also part of the like revenge. Like he's like Sayo is also trying to get revenge on Battler by being like, you are responsible. You're directly responsible for these deaths. Because in every other game, Battler has just found things and there's been a message for him. Like, th this is a murder mystery. Actually, out. you know what? That lines up nicely because the first time that Battler, I guess, goes against the plan is when he defends Natsui in the yes, study. Yes, And then after that is when everyone dies. Is when it immediately ends, yes. It's possible that maybe... Uh, the, oh God. The, the killings were done almost as like, hey, bitch, stick to the plan. Yeah, you didn't stick to the plan, so you know what? This is a little horseshit anyway. Blah, blah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, like, she doesn't have any use for the Twilights, and like... Well, I mean, obviously, we, we start off with, like, seeming like it's the Twilights, but it's not... I don't think she'll stick to that going forward. And then, and then the weird one is, is the second quote-unquote Yeah, Twilight. there isn't even a second kill. Like, she's not really following the plans of the Twilights. Um, I like, mean, this wasn't even necessarily the culprit. This, like, Ava and Nanja were the first ones into the room here. This is also true. Um, this one was, like, entirely a ruse. Yes. In fact, it's entirely possible that in the actual scope of the story, uh, everyone except Natsu Natsui thought that everyone was still alive. Yep, yep. Um, because, you know, the adults are still all going along with the plan, presumably yep. because they think that they're going to corner Natsui and that their kids are going to yep, be fine yep. in the end. Yep, that's the whole, like, plan is to corner Natsui and expose that Kinto is dead um, by pre pretending that there's a murder going on, um, which, you know, is a big part of a lot of the other episodes as well. Um, I, I did definitely note uh, after the after the trial, it's like, hold on, we didn't even touch on Hideyoshi's death. Yeah. And then a few minutes later, I was like, oh, yeah. I'd said he didn't die, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's... Anyway, come back to the, like, love thing. Um, I think it's pretty clear that Sayo's not out to help people. She's not out to communicate. She's just murder hoboing her way through this uh, encounter. Yeah. I think this is definitely one of the episodes in terms of uh, showing who the culprit is that does the least... For their character, but the most for their backstory. Mm. Like a lot of the other episodes, you read, you reread them after finishing episode eight, and you're like, "Oh, that's the culprit with this thing, and that's the culprit with that thing, and you know, yeah. this is how they feel about this." This episode, I don't think there is a th single thing that I go back and I go, "Oh, this is how the culprit was feeling about this." No. It's all no. this is the culprit's history, like the man, man from nineteen years ago story. Yeah, there is still some character moment in the purgatory space and you know the whole uh drowning and turning to ash thing yeah but that is very much a static thing yep. where we're not seeing the culprit's actions and reactions we're seeing battler coming to terms yep, yep. with the evidence he already has yep. like even uh ken and shannon on the board don't really do a lot or say a lot or like i think there's a moment when they go into kinzo's study where ken and shannon act a bit uh, apprehensive about about kinzo's existence but beyond that like we don't really get a lot of the emotional reaction. Like in episode one, there's the, the moment with Ken and the fertilizer. Um, with Shannon, there's all sorts of fun stuff about her and the and the ring. And like in later episodes, there's more stuff with Shannon and, and George. And I, I think um, the other thing was, is that you mentioned one of the things that tipped off who the culprit was to you was yeah, the fact that Canon and Shannon were always portrayed as like the heroes in magic yes, scenes. Yes, yes, That doesn't happen at all in here. No, they're just the servants. There is not a single magical scene featuring them. No, not at all. I guess except the fact that they appear together which yeah which is <laughs> magic i mean it's all magic right question mark it, yeah. yeah yeah i mean that that's well that's one that's actually one thing i did want to comment on i don't know if we did this in the in the full the to before this but like battler even discusses in this episode before apa ep7 comes around a certain someone puts their finger on it but battler even says like well these nox rules like if you can just guarantee that there's no trap doors isn't isn't that magic of itself like like, you know, you cast the Detect Doors spell and there's no doors here. That's like magic, right? Yeah. Blurring the lines between mystery and fantasy is something that Ryukyu does in really subtle and awesome ways. And I 
fucking love it. Oh, I I wasn't really super on board with it the whole way. Like, no? I I very much stuck a lot of the time to uh, anti fantasy. Yeah. Because the story was like that's how you should do it, and I was like, okay, story, I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> I don't. I've only changed my premise like three or four times by this point. I would have to change it again. But I think like, like yeah. at the beginning of episode one, I was like, well, it's a mystery story with magic in it, so clearly it's clearly it's got to be both. Yeah. And then we get to the end of episode seven and it's like, oh, it was both. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I see why he did that. Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And it was it was still really fantastic, but mm. I don't think it perhaps uh, confused me as much, <laughs> which is probably one of the reasons I was able to get a lot of things. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, besides all of that, like you still figured out like the, a lot of the backstory. You even pinged on the uh, Kinzo's children thing. Um, uh, which uh, I don't, I don't want to talk about. Uh, but I could feel like in the room next to you, I I felt uncomfortable, and I could feel your like shifting in your seat. Like the the idea of Kinzo having a child with uh with Beatrice is is just it's nasty. It's yeah, not it's not you good. You can definitely hear me like begin a sentence and go like I shouldn't say this. This is a load of shit. Yeah. Oh god, but it might work. Oh, I should say it. Oh no, it's the truth, isn't it? Yeah. I should say it because it might be the truth. Oh, no. Um, I think, yeah. speaking of things that might be the truth, the <laughs> episode five was the land of authorship theory. It was. You can tell I God was- my you. head you had was, your brain on it. I was obsessed. There were so many really obvious things in episode five that I straight up missed because I was so much on the authorship theory pain train. Yeah. Like- there was the whole thing with Lambda and, you know, leaping out the window. There was the whole, just, uh, the entire construct of Erica's character in terms yep. of characterization rather than what she meant. Yep. Um, like I, I missed so much because my head was just absolutely stuck on this document. Yep. And I wasn't wrong. Yeah. But I think... I don't. I don't necessarily regret focusing no, on it I, so I much. I wouldn't because I really enjoyed making it. Mm. I loved making it. Here's the thing: when you read a piece of fiction, don't let anybody tell you how to read it. Do what you enjoy. However, I will always be there, sitting next to you, to tell you to look at other things because that's important too. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> I think definitely when we finished episode five, I I I was. Uh, Li listening to the recap because that was like how I prepared for the following episode each time I'd listen to the recap and be like all right where is where is my head at what yeah. should I stop doing what should I start doing and yep. I think definitely uh as I said I don't regret doing so much on the theory but it definitely encouraged me to try try less to focus on hmm. um what the greater story yeah, was yeah focus on the moment a bit more um and i think you'll you'll hear it and you'll get to see it in the end the theory that i came up with for episode six was pretty much entirely character based yeah um it was still it was still a meta well, you were even, theory. like you were even thinking about in this episode you were thinking about lambda which was which was great yeah i really like that because lambda um really sticks out as a just a really great person um <laughs> like how she she sets up the game, you know, obviously without love, but then still has these moments where like Battler and Beatrice are teaming up, which is really cute. And then there's that bit right at the end where Battler comes back. It's like I figured it out. I am the game master. And I was like, and then they're all like, but Battler can't do that. And then I was like, yeah, he can. I, I'm gonna let it. He can do it now. Go do your thing, Battler. This is gonna be great. Grabs popcorn. Like, yeah, Lambda was like, she's a shit stir. Lambda was a fan of the series. She's like, that's essentially. What I want to see Battler come back and fight Erica. That's what I want more than anything. That's what's <laughs> gonna be fun. Uh, yeah, I love her so much. Um. Who else? Was there anyone else like introduced or any concepts that we have not gone over? I don't, uh, I can't really think of anything in particular. I don't know. Like most of what we went over in the other recap or in the moment. The, like yeah. this was the episode of going over things in the moment. I yeah. Think. I think the other thing um, was, is because we got the solutions the first time through pretty yeah. much right. There isn't really much to go back and um, be like, well, Hey, you know, my original theory was this, but it ended up being this like yeah, humble um, brag again. Oh, look oh, at me. Look at him. He's look so at me go. He's so smart. He's like as smart as Erica. Um, I don't know. I don't know, maybe that's, maybe that's it. Unless you have anything else you want to add. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to add. Oh! Go for, it. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Go for it, you first. So we didn't do this last episode because we are giant dummies. 
but we have some kind of points count I hear. Oh, we do. And I haven't looked at the most recent scores. Can we have those up on Let's screen for us, Felix? On screen. How are we doing? We're in the lead. How? So, How did this happen? I don't. Well, I mean, I do know. Well, we do know. <laughs> because we saw it. Let's throw the clip up on screen. Good question. I'd love to know. Well, I'll give you 60 points. Wait, us? Did we just get 60 points? I think so. Add it to the counter. I won't accept any other answer. <laughs> God damn, we are shitty cheaters. Yeah, we're the, we're the fucking we worst. We are the worst. <laughs> you do not deserve this. In fairness, <laughs> in fairness, Ryukashi is getting points for he things is. that we said we should get points for. Yeah, we- Because um, we forgot our own rules. We totally forgot our own rules and we should be more even with Ryukashi. But I, just for that cheat, I feel like Ryukashi should win in the end. So can I'm really I... interested to see. No, no, no. Listen, <laughs> I want to go the whole way through and see the score as it plays out. I may just give him more points for the heck of it, but At we'll the, see. In the episode eight recap, we can adjust the final score. Yes, based on the of a bonus round. Bonus round. Bonus round. <laughs> yes. But <laughs> the thing is, no one in the audience has mentioned the score once no to me. No one cares. No one cares. No one cares, cares but to but us. It, it is our favorite <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to get to episode eight because there are some moments with the score where we just uh, yeah, there are some take it and run moments. with it. I, <laughs> I'm sorry about that half a Coke, by the way. Well, it was a Diet Coke. I forget. It was a Coke. It, it was, was a Coke? It was half okay. a Coke. Does he still have that? He still has it. <laughs> I think I just edited the episode with- <laughs> Spoilers! Oh my god. Bleep that out. Spoilers. Okay, I'll, I'll cut it out. They won't hear <laughs> about it. bleep it, please. <laughs> Point is- Congratulations on the half a can of Coke, Ryukishi, and however many points you have. I just you wish we hadn't given Venus. him half and quarter points because it's so much more space <laughs> on the screen. But it's great. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry for causing so much more work for you. <laughs> <laughs> so <Yeah>. anyway. <laughs> Last thing. What is it? Eric is music in this episode. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. If there is a character whose music speaks for them, it yeah. is... It is Erica. Do you want to talk about this? You're the music man. So. Uh, I, I don't want to go super de into detail on it because I think Vice Golbez does yeah, I was gonna say. a really good job on the episode five Rekenshin My Podcast. Link that. Which again, in the in the playlist in the description. Get in there. Um, but basically it's Baroque music and yep. Baroque music was written as like yep. showy, arrogant, bombastic yes. music. Yep. And if you had to pick three words to <laughs> describe Erica. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. There yeah. you go. Yeah, no, she's great. And her music is great. And her design is excellent. And I love her. And I hate her at the same time. It's so good. Erica, best girl, I would say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Yeah. It's a good character. <laughs> yeah. I, the thing is, I don't know what else to say about it without talking about EP6 because- That is true. I know what we all- Look, we all know. If you're we here, know. You, you know what happens you know in what EP6. Happens. And I can only say that I am completely and totally ready for what is going to happen. And I am- I am waiting in the wings for, for that, that moment. So you know what? This has been a short <laughs> recap, but I think the fact that we said a lot in the episode is why this is short, and yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, like, I feel like our recaps, the EP8 re recap will probably be really long, but our true recaps will probably be shorter than our yeah. question art ones because we, ha like, you had less of a handle yeah. on what was going on, and I had less of a handle on like, well, I should, I had more of a handle on like, this is what I want. Like, these are the questions I want to ask you. And this is where I want to direct you. I don't have that anymore. I'm just like, how'd you feel? Go I, tell I, me. I got to tell you though, episode six is about to kick off uh, with the best no, opening. No, The best opening. Some, <laughs> of, some of you have, the best put, have, characters. have put together why episode six will have the best opening. <laughs> But I don't think you will understand until you see oh, it. Oh, yes. The best character. I have never laughed so no. hard while editing as the opening of episode six. I can't wait, my dude. We will see you in episode six. See you in the comments. It's been fun. Ben, next time on. Umineko. Nanaki Kurini.